I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. Welcome to my YouTube channel. Today, we're going to talk about parabens and your reproductive health. I'm Dr. Laura Shaheen. I'm a reproductive endocrinologist helping people build their families for over 15 years. And a huge part of my counseling and education are lifestyle changes that you can make to optimize your reproductive health. And when I was learning all about options, I learned a lot about toxins uh, or endocrine disruptors and how they might impact our egg health, our sperm health, risk of miscarriage, success with fertility treatment. And it was overwhelming when I first started learning about this, but now I think it's an empowering part of education. And it's not just something that we should focus on while we're trying to conceive or maybe while we're pregnant. It's something that we really should learn about throughout our whole life because these endocrine disruptors can impact lots of different health issues. So today I want to talk about parabens. Parabens are a group of chemicals that were manufactured starting in the 1920s and they are used through out your household and throughout products that we come in contact with every single day. So a lot of cosmetics or beauty products, things like shampoos, laundry detergent, makeup, um, lots of products you use kind of on your skin. They're also found in foods and beverages. Parabens are used as a preservative. These are chemicals that prevent mold and bacteria from growing in products. They increase the shelf life of products. They um, help make them honestly safer. So you'll hear a lot of conflicting information when it comes to parabens because some people are very pro paraben. You know, they keep your product safe. You don't certainly don't want to use a mascara that has mold. You certainly don't want to have food get bacteria, you know, while it's waiting to be eaten on the shelf. But yet parabens have been associated with harm for especially our reproductive health. They act as endocrine disruptors and these are toxins that can really impact our overall health and well-being. So after watching this video, I just want you to learn more about parabens, be educated and think about switching out some products in your home that do not have parabens because there are alternatives. If you are new to this channel, welcome. If you are coming back, welcome back. I am trying so hard to educate educate you on topics that are associated with reproductive health. I am a fertility specialist. I'm helping counsel my patients every day. And this particular topic, endocrine disruptors, toxins, and your reproductive health is something that really needs to be talked about more. And so I'm happy that you're here learning about it. Be sure to like this video, comment with questions that you have, and subscribe to this channel so you can keep learning. What products contain parabens? I mentioned a few in the introduction, but lots and lots of products, things that you use on your skin, like shampoos, moisturizers, cosmetics, laundry detergents. A lot of products with the word fragrance have parabens in them because it's a way to increase the shelf life of products. It's a way to decrease the overgrowth of mold and bacteria. It's a preservative. And so parabens can do a great job of that, but they can just also have other harmful effects. Other products that you could have in your house that have parabens in that you might not realize are things that you eat, things that you ingest, beverages, foods. You know, the FDA really does not regulate parabens. So you might ask yourself, well, if these are chemicals that could even have the suggestion of causing harm, why are they in our products? Well, the FDA, the Federal Food and Drug Administration, really does not limit the number or amount or type of parabens that are in our cosmetics or our foods. They do limit how much can be in prescription medications. And I'm going to link here what the FDA says about parabens. Well, what types of parabens are there? There are so many. There's methylparaben, ethylparaben, butylparaben, many, many, many different kinds. Um, when you look on the back of a product, it should be listed and it'll typically have the word paraben in it if you're looking for it. So how common are parabens? Well, they're everywhere. And when the CDC did a study looking at urine from Americans and seeing how many were exposed, over 92% of Americans had parabens in their urine. One reason why that's really concerning is that our body gets rid of parabens very quickly. That's one of the reasons why companies argue that it's safe, because even if we're exposed to it, it's such a short amount of time, we get rid of it quickly. But on this spot check with the CDC, 
at one time, over 92% of Americans had it in their system. And I'll link that information here. Another trial looking at the presence of parabens in our system and the impact of stopping using products with them is the Hermosa trial. This was looking at the presence of parabens in teenage girls in relationship to how many beauty products they were using. And it really showed that when they stopped using products with parabens, a couple of days later, the levels are decreased by at least 45%. It's a really interesting trial. So really parabens can be found in anyone. Studies have shown it's found in pregnant women and babies born. And even though the argument is that it can be excreted from our bodies very quickly, there are studies that show that it can be stored in our fat cells and stick around. So what about parabens in our fertility? There are lots of studies showing in multiple different ways that parabens can impact our endocrine system and our reproductive health. Most of the studies show that the larger the paraben, the more complex the change, the more impact it has on endocrine receptors and our hormonal system. These chemicals have been shown in multiple different studies to impact the function of endocrine receptors. So receptors for estrogen, receptors for testosterone have all been altered in their function and their action after being exposed to parabens. What about the impact on female infertility? Well, studies have shown high levels of parabens have been associated with diminished ovarian reserve. One interesting study looking at women who are attending a fertility center, about 200 women were tested for both their ovarian reserve and the level of four different parabens in their system. And a high level of certain parabens were associated with a higher follicle stimulating hormone level and a lower antral follicle count. So see my information here on YouTube and on my website and my blog posts, all about testing for ovarian reserve with FSH or follicle stimulating hormone and antral follicle count, but a high FSH and a low antral follicle count can be associated with infertility and a lower success rate with fertility treatment. What about other aspects of female reproductive health and high levels of parabens? Well, studies have shown shorter menstrual cycles in women with high levels of parabens, as well as altered hormonal levels, lower estradiol levels, which is one form of estrogen, altered thyroid hormone levels, and shifts in ratios between estradiol and progesterone. What about infertility and parabens? A really interesting study, and I'll list it here, out of Michigan, looked at about 500 couples trying to conceive. During the study observational period, they measured levels of parabens and they saw how long it took for couples to conceive. And female patients or women with the highest level of parabens in their system took the longest to conceive. I know I'm mentioning a lot of studies here and I'm going through it pretty quickly, but the reason I want to do this, I don't want to bore you with all these studies, but it's really important because when I bring up this information to my patients and my colleagues um, in reproductive health, sometimes people say, well, you know, Dr. Shaheen, it's great that you care about this, but there really is a lot of evidence out there to say it. Just because you haven't heard of it or you haven't looked it up yourself, that doesn't mean that the evidence isn't there. So go to my website, see my blog post on the paraben paradox, and you'll find over 35 different references there to studies showing these, including the ones I mentioned, and even more. What about male factor infertility and parabens? There's several studies that show high levels of parabens are associated with poor sperm parameters. An interesting study published in 2014, I'll list it here, looked at over 300 men attending a fertility clinic, measured levels of parabens, and looked at semen analysis results, and showed that high levels of parabens were significantly associated with an increase in the percentage of sperm with abnormal morphology high DNA fragmentation, and a decrease in the number of modal sperm and testosterone levels. What about parabens and fertility treatment? There's a couple of small studies that have looked at this. One interesting study by Dodge, and I'll list it here, looked at levels of parabens and outcome in couples at a fertility clinic doing both intrauterine inseminations and IVF and they showed a significantly lower success rate with intrauterine inseminations for the patients who had high levels of parabens. What about fertility treatment outcomes in parabens? Well, there's a couple of small studies that looked at this. Very interestingly, a couple of studies that looked at IVF outcomes and levels of parabens did not show a difference, but one study by Dodge looked at outcomes after patients were undergoing intrauterine inseminations or IUIs, and they found a lower success rate in patients with the highest level of parabens. What about parabens in pregnancy? 
well. Babies can be exposed to parabens if moms are exposed. Parabens have been found in cord blood, in placental tissue, in amniotic fluid, and even breast milk. So it's important to realize that this exposure can be impacted while you're pregnant. Some studies have shown high levels of parabens have been associated with a lower birth weight and increased risk of gestational diabetes. What about parabens and obesity? High levels of parabens have been associated with a higher risk of obesity. What about parabens and cancer? This has been shown too. High levels of parabens have been associated with an increased risk of cancer. So again, I want you to go to my website, look at my blog post, Parabens and Paradox, to really get a detailed look into these studies and these associations. We still have a lot to learn, um, but this is really important to realize. So I want you to be aware that you could hear different things from different providers. You could read different evidence. You could do a Google search and find different recommendations. Parabens were named the 2019 Allergen of the Year by the American Society of Contact Dermatitis. And so here is a medical society full of doctors and healthcare providers that are saying parabens are wonderful for our patients because they do a great job of making sure products do not have mold or bacteria that act as a great preservative. And a lot of patients with contact dermatitis or skin irritation will not have that skin irritation if they use a product like lotion with parabens in it. And so I just want you to be aware that there's a lot of different information out there and I am trying to educate you on the impact on reproductive health and share the knowledge that we have with the current evidence that's available. So in conclusion, in summary, parabens are an inexpensive and very effective preservative found in many household products um, in lotions that we use, cosmetic products, um, a lot of food that we eat, beverages that we drink, um, because it works really well as a preservative. The problem is, is that there is evidence that parabens impact our reproductive health. They can change the function of endocrine receptors in our body. Uh, people can have lower and changed hormonal levels when they have high levels of parabens in their system. Um, there is evidence that it can change menstrual cycles, change ovarian reserve test results, impact sperm parameters, impact time to conception. Um, and we still need to keep learning, keep doing evidence, keep understanding, but I hope that this video has increased your awareness of this particular endocrine disruptor, this particular toxin that can be associated with reproductive health. So how do you decrease your exposure to parabens? You can find products that do not have parabens in it. You can go to ewg.org. You can use apps on your phone, like EWG, that's Environmental Working Group. You can use the Think Dirty app also on your phone, can give you information. You can read products yourself. So you can look at the back and see if parabens are listed as an ingredient in the product. And you can go to websites, you can search for, you know, paraben free products. So I'm going to list resources here in this video. Again, look at my website and my blog post on parabens. Um, we'll list what the FDA says about parabens, what the CDC says about parabens, and ways that you can find products that do not have parabens if this is something that you want to look into. I hope you learned something from this video today. Like this video if you learned something, comment with questions that you have, subscribe to this channel, and stick around for more learning.